So what did we cover in the last uh, tutorial? We covered one mediator that we created, which is going to listen for everything that happens in the view, which is those panels um, that we created in the, the communicator view. So we're in part three now, and we made a message, and that's going to be sent directly to this model, which is like the data center. It's going to hold all that information. Anybody can get information from this model. So above the views, and I've seen this sometimes where there's an issue where if you, you, you should um, map the models before the views. I've had it happen a couple of times. And so you're just going to say injector dot map singleton. You can allow anybody to get information from this model. So what is that? That's the communicator um, communicator model. Great. So now just like we did inject in the mediator, the communicator mediator can now save this information directly. So we're going to inject this model. And because we're in the communicator model uh, mediator, we can just call this model, just like we called the other one view, because it has to do with the communicator. Communicator model. OK, so now let's save our message. When they click go, we're going to call model dot add message and what is that message we're going to add that text now we need to uh, things are just happening but we need to actually dispatch uh, an event but we don't want to dispatch the event here we just want to set the messages we want to dispatch the event once the message actually gets saved the point at which the data is already saved because if we dispatch it here the message might not be saved so uh, we're going to create a new event here and we're going to create a package for that first for all of our many, many events, communicator.events. And we're only really going to have one event. Um, but this is cool because you get um, practice making custom events. And it's going to be called message event. Now, there already is a message event in Flex built in, but it's not exactly what we want. So we're going to create our own. And it's going to override, uh, sorry, it's going to extend the event class. So that's good. And you can take out the bubbles and cancelable out of super. So we'll take that out. And in this event class, we're just going to create a situation where they can update the viewer that a message has been updated. So we're going to create a public static constant here. And it's going to be called messages updated. And that's going to be a string that's going to be equal to messages updated. We'll put a quotes around that. And that's really all we need to do. But Robot Legs does require that you do one other thing, and that is that you put a clone in there. You override the public function clone. OK. So we overrode clone, and we're just going to return a new message event. And make sure it's the one the yours not the mx dot messaging event and that's just you're just going to return type okay so we created our message event and what's going to happen is um, once the message has gotten saved so where does the message get saved right here and also right here they could set it in both places so let's just make sure we dispatch an event when the message has been saved so that anybody that's listening to it gets that information so um, there's two ways to dispatch events. When I do it in a model, I always call dispatch. And that's a kind of a magic, uh, easy way to do it. So you just call dispatch. And that's a robot leg specific thing. We're going to say it's a new message event. And that's a message event dot message updated. So now when the user adds that, and we'll just do that for set messages as well. So now when the user adds a message, it's going to go to the model. It's going to save it. As soon as it gets saved, we're going to dispatch this um, message, event, message event that's going to say the message has been updated. Now whatever anybody wants to do with that is up to them. You could create 50 other things that listen for this event. And that's kind of the great thing. So you can imagine you have 14 different panels because you created this super crazy user interface um, with a bunch of different dials and 
and uh, and text areas and all sorts of stuff and it all gets uh, updated at the same time only from this one event that's getting dispatched and that's kind of the uh, great thing about it or one of the great things about it so our model is pretty much set now when the um, message gets updated we want to make sure that we're listening for it in the mediator so we'll go back to our mediator and we will now listen for a new event and we're going to listen for that message um, updated event so that we can update the place where all our messages are viewed we're going to map a new listener and now who is dispatching this event obviously it's some random situation that we don't know about all we know is we want to listen for this event we don't know necessarily who's dispatching it we just know that the event dispatcher of robot legs is dispatching it it's not the view so unless it's the view it's probably going to be this event dispatcher and that's because we just dispatch the event into the whole book of events you know the whole map of events and it's all up there and whoever wants to listen to it can listen to it and this is kind of that way to do that you just say who is dispatching it? well the event dispatcher and that's kind of generic way of saying it's not generic it's um whatever it is so um, you're listening for that message to be updated and then you're gonna call message added once that message is updated and at this point we can update our text area however we want to do that now if that message carried a lot of stuff with it like if it gave you information about the time and the date it'd be really important that you uh, listen for a message event here because it's just a generic event and nothing really else is happening we could do um, just a plain old event here just type event but um, I like to have my custom events and see that I made something important. So um, now we can just say view.messageTI, which is that text input. But we can just clear that because we know for sure that the message has been saved. And now that the message has been saved, we can display it to the text area dot text. Now we don't want to just display that one message, we want to display them all. And how do we do that? We can say model, which is that communicator model, which has all the messages saved, dot messages, and we'll say join. And we'll just we'll just join them all by a line break. Okay, so that's pretty cool. That should do um, what we want. So let's test that out just to try it out. Now we may have some errors. I've just typed a whole lot of stuff. Um, so now we have all of our stuff here. We got Harry, John, and Sam. And so if we type into Harry's text input area, hello, I'm Harry. And we click OK. OK, so now you notice that all three views have been updated by that mediator. And we didn't have to do a whole lot of for loops or anything like that. Um, it's just by adding the views onto the screen and we can type here hello I'm John and this text input area only gets erased once the message has been updated and for sure it has been saved and that's what we really want to do and Sam here will write hello I'm Sam okay so that's pretty awesome now we just want to do one other thing we want to make sure that our message count gets updated and we'll do that really quickly in the last tutorial.